So this is my studio palette and as you can see it is a Mijello Airtight Double Decker palette. And as we open it you can see it is huge. So much mixing space. So let's talk about the details. For the starters it has 30 wells, 14 on this side and it has 16 on this other side. Regarding the mixing space, well, it is massive. So on this side you can see it has a really big space which is not divided. And the other side it has, well, pretty much the same space, but you have a small division here in the middle. And here's where the double decker part comes in. You can take this tray out and you will have an even bigger mixing area. Then to close it, you just move this tray over to this side, making it, you know, effectively a double decker. And now you can close it. It closes very securely and I really haven't experienced any issues with it. Now a couple of things that I do want to mention is that when I bought it, it didn't really open fully flat on the table. It kind of stayed like this, so yeah, when I went in with my brush, it moved around and became a little annoying very quickly. So upon further inspection, I found that both sides of the palette were touching here. So what I did is that I came uh, with a small file and knocked it down just a little bit, uh, you know, just enough material until the palette was able to lay flat on the, on the table. So yeah, not a big deal, just a bit, a little bit annoying. Then just as any plastic palette, beading is a little bit of an issue, as you can see here. Although, yeah, with a little bit of use, it gets better, uh, but you have to just wear it in. Talking about the wells, well, they are huge too. You can go in with as big as a brush as you need and you'll be all right. On top of that, I tend to add colors that I occasionally play with here in the corners. And yeah, I have effectively added eight extra colors. I treat this palette sort of an, as an extension of my 21 color daily palette um, that I made a video before. So I'll show you the colors that I don't have there. Uh, just the ones that are unique to this palette. So let's start with the first one. Hence the yellow light. I have this color pretty much just because it came on the essential set. But slowly I have realized that yeah, it is not really my thing. There's something about the acidity of that color that makes me feel a little bit weird. So as soon as I run out of it, I'm re replacing it with Hansa Yellow Medium, which is so much more versatile for me. New Cambodge is a very nice warm yellow. It is super clean and super useful as well. It has a very good tinting strength. And even though I don't use it too much, when I want to go for a clean, bright orange, yeah, this is what I go for with, along with a warm red. And yeah, this one also came on the essential set. Nicolaso yellow. So this is the exception to me not liking cool yellows. This Nicolaso yellow, it is on the earthy side, on its mass zone, but as you dilute it, it becomes very cool, but you know, in a very beautiful way. I see it almost as the cool cousin of the uh, famous quinacridone gold. Aussie red gold. I'm not a super huge fan of bright colors, especially oranges. But that's precisely why I really like this one and it's per perfect for me. Even though it is an orange, it is an earthy one, which I love. So much so that I even bought a pair of New Balance shoes because they reminded me of this color. Venetian red. I kind of got this as an accident because I mixed it with Indian red. Venetian is also a PR 101, so it is on the opaque side, but it is more orange leaning than Indian red. So to me, it looks more like, let's say, raw clay. So yeah, overall, a very natural and a very useful color. Perlin violet. This is a color that I'm in love with. It reminds me a lot of a good glass of red wine. It's got a tiny bit of earthiness to it that it makes me think about the taste of, you know, the wood barrels on, on wine. Maybe it's just me, but it brings all these memories to my mind and just makes me like this color so, so much. Quinacridone purple. When I chose this color, I was in between this, Imperial Purple and Rose of Ultramarine. Later I found out that Rose of Ultramarine and Imperial Purple, they are both made of Quinacridone Rose and, and Ultramarine Blue, which I already have, and I could make those colors myself. So I decided to go with Quinacridone Purple 
Amethyst Genuine. This one came in the basic Primatech set and I thought I wouldn't like it too much but I was very wrong. It granulates beautifully and on top of that it has the tendency to sparkle a bit which yeah I have been enjoying so much as uh, I've been using it as an effect here and there. Mayan Blue Genuine. This is another one that came in the Primatech set and it is such a beautiful blue. It has a little bit of a green shade to it and it is super deep. So it reminds me of deep seas, whales and so on. Uh, and yeah, it also has a little bit of a tendency as well to granulate, which again, I'm a big fan of granulation. Jada Genuine. I have to be honest here. I almost messed up this swatch, but yeah, I was able to rescue it. Jada Genuine, it has a very deep um, green tone to it. And it reminds me of those deep, lush forests. This one also tends to granulate, but it kind of separates. And you can see a sedimentation of black particles, which generates, yeah, this very, very interesting effect. Transparent Yellow Oxide. So this one, I've been using it instead of Yellow Ochre. As the name implies, well, it is very transparent. It's much more transparent than Yellow Ochre. And it has a very similar color. Kind of, I would say, kind of in the middle of yellow ochre and raw sienna. Mummy bauxite. Did you know that originally this color was made of actual ground mummies? Now, of course, this wasn't just creepy, but also a crime against cultural heritage. So, yeah, not to mention not sustainable. So, um, now it is made out of bauxite. And I use this as an alternative to burnt sienna. Piemontine Genuine. This is a similar shade to Indian Red, but it is much more transparent. In my eyes, it kind of has a slight tendency to an almost purple shade. And it also has a similar tendency like Jada Genuine to granulate with black particles and tend to sediment into the grooves of the paper. Sepia. This one is my alternative to raw umber. Although in sun is not as green as raw umber, and nor as red as burnt umber, it can also granulate a little bit, but nothing too crazy in my experience. So it is super useful to mute down or darken other colors. Hematite Genuine. This one feels like painting with charcoal particles suspended in water. So here you see it has a crazy sedimentation, but it isn't, yeah, it, it isn't tinting at all. So if you want to give that effect to your mixes, you can use this color without changing too much the shade of, yeah, the shade you want. Moon Glow, I love it uh, for the way it separates into purple, pink, and also kind of green. So I use it when I, I'm painting those birds that are so dark that they kind of shine in different colors. Zoe's I Genuine, this color, yeah, it is so hard to re-wet. So I either use it straight from the tube or spray it and then let it soften for yeah like 10 minutes or something like that but the thing is that once you apply it you'll see such a crazy level of granulation that it is going to make everything worth the pain now finally if you want to see the swatches of the rest of the colors please click here and if you want to see how i set up that palette well click on this other one and if you like the video please consider liking and subscribing have a good one